When we look at incident management across the organization, some of the responsibilities include developing an information security incident management and response plan, handling and coordinating information security incident response activities, and planning, budgeting, and program development for all matters related to information security. The approach to incident response may vary depending on the situation itself, but the goals still remain constant. Contain, notify, recover, and take into account any legal requirements that you may need to account for. The information security manager also needs to define what constitutes a security-related incident. Uh, typical examples of this is malicious code or unauthorized access, and especially looking at denial of service and user misuse of information systems. There are a number of resources available in the typical organization that may be identified and utilized in the development of an incident management and response plan, such as policies and standards, incident response technologies, personnel, roles and responsibilities, skills, awareness training, audits, and outsourced security providers. When it comes to policies and standards, the incident response plan must be backed by well-defined policies, standards, and procedures to ensure the incident management activities are aligned with the overall mission of the organization, to set the correct expectation, to maintain consistency and reliability of services, being sure to understand all identified roles and responsibilities, and set requirements for identified alternates for all important functions. The incident management team usually consists of an information security manager, a steering committee or advisory board, permanent and dedicated team members, and virtual or temporary team managers. The security steering group has a very specific function here though. The security steering group will approve the charter and it serves as an escalation point. To build an incident response team with capable incident handlers, organizations need people with certain skill sets and technical expertise. They must be able to respond to incidents, perform analysis tasks, and communicate effectively with internal and external contacts. Audits are performed to verify compliance with policy standards and procedures, and audits can also be useful in reviewing incident management and response plans and capabilities. Strong, clear objectives when it comes to incident management exist to address the inevitable events that threaten the operation of any organization. There are several things that need to occur in order to accomplish this. Define the objectives. Understand the desired state. Good, strong strategic alignment. Positive risk management. Assurance processes and full integration. Value delivery and resource management. When it comes to incident management metrics, measures, and indicators, they are the criteria used to measure the effectiveness and efficiency of the incident management function. Common criteria that are used as part of the incident management metrics might include the total number of reported incidents, the total number of detected incidents, the average time to respond versus the average time to resolve, total number of incidents successfully resolved, total number of employees receiving security awareness training, total damage from reported and detected incidents, and total savings from potential damages. Most organizations have some sort of incident response capability. The information security manager needs to identify what is already in place. To do this, you could survey senior management, take a good self-assessment, or have an external assessment or audit performed. There are three different areas an information security manager should look to identify the current state, the history of incidents, threats, and vulnerabilities. The first step in incident response management process is to consider the potential impact of each type of incident that may occur. To do this, you need a BIA. Remember, the BIA is a systematic activity designed to assess the impact of disruption, unauthorized access, and tampering or total loss of availability. Your BIA should establish escalation of loss over time, identify the minimum resources needed to recover, and prioritize the recovery of processes and supporting functions. There are nine core elements to the BIA.
Describe the business mission, identify the functions, determine dependencies, determine other subsequent operations, identify critical process cycles, estimate impacts, identify the resources and activities required, determine the workaround possibilities, and estimate recovery time. The benefits of a good BIA cannot be overstated. It assists in the understanding of the amount of potential loss and various other undesirable effects that could occur from certain types of incidents. It helps facilitate all response management activities, and it will raise the level of awareness for response management within the organization. When we look at the continued development of our incident response plan, it's based on the gap analysis. The gap analysis will provide information information on the gap between current incident response capabilities compared to the desired level. By comparing the two levels, the improvements in capabilities, skills, and technology can then be identified. This should include processes that need to be approved and resources needed to achieve the objectives. The information security manager should implement an escalation process for effective security management. A detailed description of the escalation process should be well documented, and the escalation process should include prioritizing event information, the decision process for determining when to alert various groups, including senior management and stakeholders, and a mechanism to communicate crisis or event information. As the information security manager, you should have have processes defined for the help desk personnel to identify a typical help desk request from a possible security incident. Uh, the help desk personnel should be aware of the procedures to report and escalate security incidents. Next, your incident management and response teams. The plan must identify teams and define their assigned responsibilities in the event of an incident. The involvement of these teams depends on the level of disruption of service and the types of assets lost, compromised, damaged, or endangered. Some standard teams would be an emergency action team, a damage assessment team, an emergency management team, a relocation team, and an overall security team. When it comes to organizing, training, and equipping your response staff, this is not an area that you want to cut. Remember, they are there to help ease the strain of what could be catastrophic event. So, training the response team is essential. As the information security manager, you should develop events, scenarios, and test the response and recovery plans to ensure that the team participants are familiar with their task and can do them out of reflex. An added value of training is detecting and modifying ambiguous procedures to achieve clarity and determine recovery resources that may not be adequate or effective. The incident notification process, as the information security manager, you should understand understand that having an effective and timely security incident notification process is a critical component of an effective security program. Uh, mechanisms exist that enable an automated detection system or monitor to send email or phone messages to designated personnel. When developing and maintaining an incident management plan, there may be unanticipated changes as a result of, for instance, the lack of management buy-in and organizational consensus. A mismatch to organizational goals or structure, the lack of communication process, or perhaps the overall complexity of the plan itself. Here's a look at the seven step IT contingency planning process. Starting with step one, develop contingency planning processes. Step two, conduct business impact analysis. Step three, identify preventative controls. Step four, develop recovery strategies. Step five, develop contingency planning. Step six, plan, test, train, and exercise. And step seven, plan maintenance. Risk-based classification systems need to be in place. Uh, planning processes include the following main phases. The risk assessment and business impact assessment. The response and recovery strategy definition. Documenting response and recovery plans. Training covering response and recovery procedures. Uh, updating response and recovery plans. Testing the response and recovery plans. And 
auditing the response and recovery plans. Once the organization is up and running in recovery mode, the business continuity team should monitor the restoration progress at the primary site. The teams that were responsible for relocating to the alternate site and making it operational perform a similar operation to return to the primary site. When it comes to the selection of recovery strategy, it depends on the number of factors, including criticality of business processes and applications that support it, cost, time required to recovery, security related considerations such as the exposure of valuable and or sensitive information to unauthorized persons, or overall reliability. An appropriate strategy is one that has a reasonable cost and takes into account the overall impact and likelihood of a occurrence. The cost of recovery is the cost of preparing for possible disruptions as well as the cost of putting these into effect in the event of an incident. When it comes to addressing threats, some of the strategies might include how to eliminate or neutralize the threat, taking steps to minimize the likelihood of the threat's occurrence, and taking steps to minimize the effects of the threat if the incident occurred. Next, we'll take a look at recovery sites. The different types of offsite backup hardware facilities available are hot sites, warm sites, cold sites, mobile sites, duplicate information processing facilities, and mirrored sites. When trying to decide which site is best for your organization, understand the following criteria. The site chosen should not be subject to the same natural disaster as the primary site. Coordination of hardware and software strategies is necessary. Resource availability must be assured. There must be agreement concerning the priority of adding applications until the recovery resources are fully utilized and regular testing is required.